was reading an article on Live Science about this technology called LIDAR. They've used it to map different areas of Africa and South America. It gives them the ability to kind of burn away, so to speak, the vegetation and look at the density of the underlying topography. And they have found a lot of hidden structures, ancient structures. This particular one that you're looking at is from South Africa. Now, looking at these images, I've been able to correlate them to some things down in Antarctica that up until this point I haven't really used in videos because I wasn't sure about what I was looking at. To me, they definitely looked out of the norm. They didn't look natural, but I couldn't really put um, a label on them. So I thought in today's video, starting at this point, and I will, of course, in the first pinned comment, not in the description box, I will put the links to this article from Live Science so that you can understand the technology, and you can use that to put up next to what we see in Antarctica and then make decisions for yourself. This is the article where they show this, and I just wanted to show a couple of different pictures of the footprints. We've talked about this before, of ancient remains, what they look like. Now, it's kind of hard to see, but way over here to the right, there is a human being standing. So if we just assume, generally speaking, six feet, five to six feet, it gives you an idea of how big this is. So not very big, but definitely there. And, you know, definitely if you stumbled across something like this, you would say, okay, yeah, this is hand of man. Sometimes it's not as clear as far as the uh, the angles go. This is from England. This is something that they've uncovered, and this was evidence of a Roman-era structure. And this is something else from that same dig. It's a irrigation system that they had discovered. So just to give you an idea of what we're looking at today. Now, real quick, we've used these three different assets combined to put together a better picture. This map, sorry about that, is a representation of what Antarctica would look like if there hadn't been the damage from the ice. And where we're going to be looking at today is down here in the lower left-hand corner, 7, 8 o'clock-ish. There looks like there's kind of a natural bay. We found a lot of things here before. Once we get there, you'll definitely recognize the region. And let me... There we go. And this is a, another topographical survey using a similar technology to LIDAR. This area, this region right here is where we're going to be. Um, if you're looking at, of course, this part up here by South America being 12 o'clock, this would be about 8 o'clock. So without any further delay, let's just get that gotten rid of. And let's head down to, real quick, to cover some business from the last Antarctica video. Some folks had said that these, uh, what I had referred to as cobbled stone streets, those that each of these stones would be miles across, and so it couldn't possibly be. I'm gonna just going to blow that out of the water right now. Let me find a random one here. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. This one here is kind of a larger one. We're going to pull up the, the tools, the ruler, and measure this across. And it is... Okay, so it's about 65 feet across. So, yeah, probably, you know, bigger than your average driveway paver, for sure. But who's to say that these people weren't perhaps larger than we are? And I'll just let you use your imagination there. There's been all sorts of allegations of the Nephilim. And it also could be something, I thought about this too, there are technologies that we have now where guys will go out and lay, you know, these large swaths of concrete or cement. And then they'll put these um, frames over top of it to make it look like it was stone that was put in there. And then, of course, they'll fill in the gaps with some type of different color mortar. 
it's quite a bit easier to do that, to use the, the forming technique and the, the mortar fill in and to actually, you know, lay each one of these rocks. So this would be something they could definitely have pulled off. All right, so this will be the first site, Structural Remains 1. And I've got four of these labeled, so it's probably going to be a, a minute before I can remember the details of each one as I look at it. But as we zoom in here under the snow, the first thing that stuck out to me was, of course, the, the nice, once again, as we've seen before, pretty 90-degree angles and what just looks like what may have been a couple of small buildings, maybe one here, one here, got some other stuff going on in the middle here. And it's near some other things that we had found in other videos. This is the, uh, and some people took issue with this. I found what looked to me like the skeleton of a giant flying serpent. Now that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. I'll let you guys take a quick peek at this. Um, this is what I look to me like a giant spine right here because it's so different than the mountain structure around it. And if you zoom in real close, this area here in the center where there's a break, it looks like where this could have possibly been the wings of a giant flying serpent. And if you look real close right down here at the very end of this, right here where I'm circling, it looks like a skull because you've got a nose, a mouth, two eyes, and a head structure. And very near it are what these... There's, it, and basically, for lack of a better term, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term Fibonacci, the Fibonacci sequence of uh, prime numbers. But this is what it looks kind of like a um, bass clef, for those of you who are musicians. And you see another one here. The imaging isn't exact, but in this region, you see a lot of this next to this. So that's what we had found here. So it would make sense if this were some type of a place where they worshipped either birds or snakes or whatever. We know that ancient man did this. That would be something you could possibly, you know, believe or envision was the case. There's a couple of other structures down here I'll look at closer later. But let's go to Structural Remains 2. Okay, once again, here we see something that looks like the base of a much larger building. Right here, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. It looks like, and real close here, if you look in, this looks straight up like a doorway. That, of course, the structure is gone now, but this is the footprint of it. And there's, you know, when you zoom out and you look at it from even this high up, it's very apparent, it's very different than the nature around it. Something was clearly constructed here. All right, structural remains three. Now, this one has a whole different kind of flavor to it. This one... There's no snow or very, very little snow. But when you look at where this is from high above, you see this, what looks like it's giant, it's rectangular, it leads right down to a river or a what's now a glacier after the instant freeze. And when you look closely at the bank of this structure, you see these pilings. This is kind of like the second picture that I had showed um, from England that where it's not particularly organized, but just organized enough to look like hand of man. The way the shadows are all kind of aligned, they're all in a row. And there's a very clear, what looks like, place where the construction stopped and started. Notice how it's all flat here. There's nothing out here. There's one little indentation, then all of a sudden we see structure, 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 and then over here there's nothing. And very odd colorations too. I'm not sure if this is 
this is copper. Um, maybe it's just something like gold light hitting it. We've shown this before too. So, and once again, um, these coordinates I actually can put in the description box. It's only external links that um, seems to bother YouTube. But let's go to uh, Structural Remains 4. All right, now this one, let's see if I have this set up in the right year. This one, I don't think I have detailed out like I had wanted to. There were different things I was going to mark, and I haven't. So let's go ahead and skip that real quick. Um, definitely something else for sure I wanted to show you guys. This partial dome structure. I've talked about these these cable tunnel structures that run near to things like this. Now, the first thing I thought when I saw this is straight up Spider-Man. I mean, it just looks like a web. And nobody is going to convince me that this is some kind of a natural formation in the snow. There's clearly something underneath the snow causing the the patterns above to appear like this. I've just, I've, I live in Florida now. It doesn't mean I've never lived places where it's been cold and done snowmobiling and been out in the middle of nowhere. And it, I've never seen anything like this. Never, never seen anything remotely like this. That's, that's just natural. It's too, uh, too predictable. When you look at this, and I don't have a real good explanation, I just called it partial dome structure because when you look at it from above, it looks like it's just, when you see the curvature of it, that the rest of that dome has either been destroyed or it's still buried. But of course, it's near, once again, two of these cable structures. One runs 90 to 270, the other one 0 to 180. And they all measure out in nautical miles. Exactly. And there's three of them. There's one here. There's the connector here. And the distance measured out exactly 17 and a half nautical miles. This section here is, I believe, eight nautical miles. And this one was seven, I think. Seven or six. I think the last thing that we'll cover is... Found a couple of things that look like cave entries. Not definitive, but just to say that we did due diligence on this. One of the great assets that you have with Google Earth Pro, as opposed to the web-based version, is being able to do what I'm doing right now. Spin the aspect around and zoom in on high-res. It just looks like something is is back there. Not totally definitive, but when you see it from, from high above, it definitely sticks out with things around it. So I guess I think that is everything that I wanted to cover today. Yep, that's pretty much all of it. There was a couple other um, things real quick. There was... Oh, wait, hold on. I know what it was. vegetation top of a mountain middle of nowhere I, I don't know how you explain that surrounded by ice and snow it's not this is nowhere near water like the ocean this is not algae this is straight up vegetation to give you an idea of the size of this area that you know we're not looking at one little plant here let's pull out our line measure one more time and do a generalized on the region okay so from here to the left to here that's 250 feet that way so almost a football field 
and 90 feet wide. So 250 feet long, 90 feet wide of green vegetation. That's pretty close to a football field, just under, in Antarctica, where it's nighttime for months at a time with no sunshine and freezing, bitter, blowing cold. And this is, I'll zoom out real quick just to show you where this is. I know we zoomed in kind of quick. Look at, look at around it. There is nothing around it. I suppose you could say, okay, you have this, this glacier right here for as a possible source of, of water, but it's not algae. It's, there's, there's no way that's not algae. Look how far away it is. And you would think if that were the case, you would see it closer to the shore here, not all the way up on the side of this mountain. So something's going on, don't know what, definitely, positively, a civilization down there. Whether currently active, formerly active, or some combination of both, the evidence is adding up. And I guess we will leave it there. 16 and a half minutes. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.